Okay, for this exercise, we need our anterior sextant model. It, number eight and number nine have been prepared for porcelain veneers. You'll notice that number eight is s significantly discolored. And we also have two veneers, and they're fairly translucent. This will allow the color to come through. The reason we like to use translucent veneers is to let the color of the natural tooth come through, but obviously it'll also let the color of our discolored tooth come through. And this is what we're going to show you how to do today is how to block that discolored tooth out. Okay, for this exercise, we're also going to need a high-speed handpiece. We're going to need a kind of a wide composite placement brush. And we get these from Cosmodent to number three and a micro brush for putting on the bonding agent. We're also going to need a mixing well for our bonding agent and then some clear water soluble tryon gel and this is just a couple examples one from Kerr and one from 3M and these are water soluble uh, tryon gels for veneers and they won't set. Okay we're also going to need a curing light to cure our resin tints and opaquers. Okay, you're going to need some kind of resin tint kit, and the resin tint kit has to contain opaquers. Uh, this is the Color Plus kit from Kerr, and it contains an A1 and an A3 opaquer, which can be used to block out discolorations. We're also going to need a light protective box where we can put our, our resin tints and our opaquers on so it doesn't set up. And this just happens to be the resin keeper from Cosmodent. Uh, it's opaque so the light doesn't go sh show through it so the materials won't set up prematurely while they're setting in our operatories or on our benches. And finally we're going to need two high-speed rotary burrs. We're going to need a number two round burr and a medium chamfer diamond. This happens to be a 30 micron chamfer diamond, both of these from Brassler. Okay, the first thing we need to do in this procedure is to evaluate really how significant the problem is. We never really know for sure how much the veneer is going to block out the discolored tooth. So the first thing we need to do is load our veneer with a clear water-soluble tryon gel, and then we'll put this on the, the prepared veneers. So we're going to try in each of one of our veneers. And then we want to make sure we seed them. Now it's important when you do try-ins that you that you optically connect the tooth or the veneer to the tooth. Otherwise, you'll you won't get an accurate determination of whether or not the discoloration is going to show through or not. Now, if we zoom in on that, you can see. that the translucent veneer over the discolored tooth number eight shows through and it's lower in value or grayer than number nine. Okay, so we always need to make this determine this determination clinically at our try and appointment to find out really the magnitude of the problem. So now we know, we verify that there is a problem now we're going to go ahead and remove these veneers, clean them up, and start our sub-opaking technique. Now we need to create a little space for our resin tints and our opaquers. So we're taking this number two round burr. And if you measure this, this will give us about 0.075 or 75 microns uh, worth of blockout. In other words, it'll give us some depth cuts. So we're going to make a couple of depth cuts in our veneer. Okay, which is going to be about 75 microns deep. Now we can go ahead and take our chamfer diamond and we're going to prepare the entire facial surface of this. Now it's important that when we prepare this facial surface that you stay away from the margins. 
because we want to make sure we still have a nice positive seat with our margins. And you can see it's not very deep. Now we generally always have a little bit of space from the die spacer during the veneer fabrication. And we're just giving it a little bit of extra space. Now we don't need a ton of space for this technique, but we do need a little bit of uh, additional space to what we receive from the laboratory. Okay, now we're going to go through and etch this if it were a clinical situation. In this particular case, because it's a plastic model, I'm just going to apply the bonding agent. So clinically, you would etch first and then rinse and evacuate the surface. And then we're going to go ahead and apply our bonding agent. And then following the manufacturer's instructions, normally you would let this set for a period of time and blow it nice and thin. And so I'll repeat that, blow it nice and thin to make sure you don't have puddles. And we can go ahead and, and cure this. Now if we've done ultra-conservative veneers, you may be totally in enamel. And so you don't need to let it set for an extended period of time. But normally there are areas on the tooth where you're in a little bit of dentin. So I pretty much routinely use a, a dentin bonding agent for this procedure. Now we need to evaluate what color blockout materials we're going to need. Clearly we're going to need some opacious material to block out the gray. And we need a little bit of maybe yellow in that opacious material or opaquer to try to get as close as possible the shade of the adjacent tooth. In our tint kit we have a number of choices. I generally will start with the opaquer and so this is a fairly light tooth so I'm going to start with the number A1 opaquer and we'll see what kind of job this does and if we need to add some color we will. So I'm going to dispense some of this A1 opaquer in our protective box and then we're going to start putting a layer of this opaquer on our discolored preparation. You don't need a lot of material for this so we're just going to put a little bit, a very small puddle on our little protective box here. That should, that should be plenty. If we need more uh, we can always dispense more later. Okay, and make sure you cover this up so it doesn't set up. Okay, now what we're going to do now is slowly try to apply a little bit of this opaquer on the surface of our prepared tooth. So we're going to get a little dab on our brush. And we're going to try to put a nice even layer over the surface of our veneer preparation. And you can see this this opaque is pretty strong. Now it's hard to get this even. And that's why I need a nice wide brush now I never try to get it all in the first increment. So in the first increment I'm going to put a fairly thin layer on. And you'll notice I'm going vertically here. And then once we got that first layer on I'm going to go ahead and cure this.
Now this entire process is a trial and error process. So you can see now that's that's actually fused onto the surface. Now if we need a little more, usually the second increment, I'll apply my tints in a horizontal direction. This allows you to get things on fairly evenly. So vertical first, horizontally second. Again, it really doesn't matter exactly how you do this. The, 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 the trick is just to get it nice and even. So it just takes a little bit of practice. And I'll go ahead and cure this again. Now we're going to evaluate. And I think when we look at this, you'll see that the opaque is doing a nice job of covering up the discolored tooth. But it's just a little bit on the whitish side. So now I'm going to dispense a couple of other colors here. On my light protected box I'm going to dispense some yellow and I'm going to dispense a little ochre. The yellow obviously is yellow, the ochre is kind of an orangish color. And I'm hoping one or the other or a combination of these two will just give me the color that I need. Here's a little bit of our yellow. Here's a little bit of our ochre. Now I'm kind of looking at these two colors and then I'm looking at the color of our adjacent tooth and I'm kind of guessing but I think we need to possibly take a little bit of our yellow and mix a little bit of this ochre with it. So I'm just going to pull a little bit aside here and I'm going to put a little bit of this ochre just to give it a little bit of a little bit of a caramel color. Again, there's no magic to this. You just got to kind of play with it and trial and error. If it's wrong, you wipe it off and try it again. Okay, so now we've mixed a little color here. I want to emphasize that I'm doing this exercise for the first time myself. So I'm actually going through the same thought process that you're going to be going through while you're doing it for the first time. Okay, so this is a color. I'm just going to put a little dab on this adjacent tooth, and you can see it looks a little bit on the yellowish side on the adjacent tooth. So that may be okay. It may not be. I think if we spread it real thin, we may be okay. So let's just give it a try and see what happens. You can see that's probably a little bit on the yellow side, so I'm going to just really try to thin that out as much as possible. You can see it's starting to pick up some of the subtle yellow tones. Now notice we haven't we haven't totally opaqued out the tooth, but I think you'll see it's starting to look more and more like the adjacent tooth. You don't have to be absolutely the same because remember the veneer and even the veneer cement is going to uh, neutralize a little bit of the mismatch. We just want to get it pretty close. So. Uh, our goal initially is to get it close and then once we cure this and again we want to make sure this is nice and thin so I'm putting on very thin layers you can see now that this is nice and set we're going to repeat the procedure with our try and gels once we put on our initial opaquers and a little bit of resin tint to try to get as close as possible what I've done is put more water-soluble try-in gel on, into each one of the veneers and tried these back on tooth number eight and number nine. Now, number eight clearly has a super gingival margin, so obviously we can't block that, that out. If that were to happen, you'd probably have to reprep your veneer. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cover up that gingival margin just to make it kind of easier to evaluate. And we're going to take a look and see how close our two veneers actually match. You can actually see we're getting pretty close. 
compared to where we started, I think our, our match is uh, significantly better. It's difficult to tell with these camera lights exactly how close you are, uh, but I think it's pretty close. Uh, realistically, though, I think I'd probably go in and put just a little more opaque on tooth number eight. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and we're going to repeat the procedure, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, try it in again. So I'm going to remove these, clean them up, and then we're going to put a little more opaque on and try them in again. Okay, I've gone ahead and removed the try and paste and, and rinse it off completely. I left the other veneer in place. And now I'm going to go ahead and just repeat the process. I'm going to actually take a little bit of my, my resin tint this time, my little uh, mixture of ochre and yellow, which I have in my protective box, and I'm going to actually mix that a little bit with my opaquer. So I'm actually going to apply a little bit of a opaquer now that has a little bit of resin tint in it. And then we'll go ahead and apply a little bit of this again on the surface of our veneer. Keep in mind that these layers have to be very thin. We've created about a, seven, uh, a 75 to 100 micron depth groove cut with our number two round burr, and so we don't have a huge amount of space to work with. I'm just applying a little more opaque on the edge here. But again, this whole process is a is a trial and error process, and a after you do this a few times, it actually goes quite fast clinically. I think it's also important that when you have a discolored tooth like this, that you make sure you appoint yourself a little extra time in your veneer cementation appointment. I generally will give myself an extra 10 or 15 minutes. You may or may not want to uh, include that in your fee. What, what I've found over the years, it's quicker for me to go ahead and do some sub opaqueing, even if it takes her 10 or 15 minutes. It's much better to do that than blow off a two or three hour appointment because my veneers don't match. And if you get, if your veneers don't match or if you try to make your veneers too opaque, you won't deliver your case, you lose your appointment, and that's going to cost you far more money in overhead time and even possibly lab bills than the 10 or 15 minutes you spend sub opaqueing. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and try our veneering again and reevaluate. And once you think it's acceptable, then you're going to show it to your patient and get their blessing. Uh, well, obviously, if we can get the patient's blessing, then we can go ahead and proceed with our final cementation. Now, note that this tooth is already treated with bonding agents, it's already got resins on it, so we just need to thoroughly wash off the water-soluble tri-end gel from this tooth and certainly the adjacent veneers, and then we can go ahead and etch the other teeth surrounding it, apply the bonding agents, and continue with our cementation procedures. So I think you'll see and have to agree that this is a uh, fairly achievable technique Chair-side. And this is why I recommend when you have a problem like this, go ahead and make all your veneers at the opacity level that you want to cover the adjacent teeth that are not as discolored. And so, for instance, if you're not changing the color very much, you would certainly have very translucent veneers, much like the ones we've demonstrated in this procedure. If you've got teeth that are dark and you're actually going to uh, change the color significantly, your veneers are already going to have a fair amount of opacity built in. But I don't try to build the veneer over the discolored tooth more opaque because the problem is if it's too opaque and it doesn't match the adjacent teeth, there's nothing you can do about it. So we're going to try these in whether they're translucent or opaque, evaluate whether or not there's a mismatch. In some instances, the veneer, if it's been opaque substantially, might be enough 
And if not, then we can go ahead and do our subtle modifications chair side by sub opaquing and tinting our veneer like we've demonstrated in this procedure. The name of the game is to close our cases at our trying appointment without having to send them back to the laboratory. And I think if you use these techniques, there shouldn't be too many times where you should have to send a case back to the laboratory because you've got a discolored tooth under one of your veneers. Thank you.